or highlight match. Actually, I'm debating. I'll see how this match goes because I've done a couple other highlights of Dreamer thus far. Dreamer starting the upper right hand corner as the green Protoss, bottom right hand corner. We have MSJ Tevik starting as the gray Protoss, or gray Protoss, gray Zerg. This is going to be on Largo, which I'll show off the map in just a second because it is a bit of a non standard map. I do want to give a shout out to Dreamer. If you are, if you speak Russian or more fluent, more fluent in Russian than English and you want to see a lot of the, uh, the pro the pro league BSL season 13 stuff dreamer is casting that so dreamer's like the full package here top level made it you know has made it to uh, the semifinals or the finals I should say of Hasu League the last two seasons um, is honestly a threat to win that casting so he's got he's the total package is all I got to say and so check out his casting particularly if you uh, speak Russian and are looking for someone like in that ilk of things where it's like because honestly like i'm not that great a player i'm a i feel like i'm a good commentator not an amazing player dreamer good amazing player and does the commentary in the native russian tongue so largo natural expansion as you can see kind of like the the standard action there but the interesting aspect of it is, is you have this mineral only which honestly doesn't have a, an immense amount of patches it's kind of just six patches and you have this huge ramp area which gives the high ground advantage to go ahead and assault that base by the way it looks like dreamer was able to sneak in go ahead and see looks like that overpool build from tefik and then you have another pocketed expansion right here with a bit of an enclosed area but you can see where holding kind of the mid area or being able being able to get in position it's i feel like the flow of trooping ends up because you kind of have this split high ground thing it becomes difficult to press into the high ground on largo but it's important to hold the high ground so you can kind of get that valuable additional base and protect your third so it almost feels like you need the two base a strong two base uh play or an opener to get a degree of map positioning so that from that map positioning looks like a dreamer's probe taking a bit of damage so that from that map positioning you can make it into the late game because otherwise it, if you can't hold position past the mid game then yeah it, it becomes very easy to wipe out mineral only and just get just get essentially strangled out from there Speaking of which, there's the new map Revolver in this season of BSL. It's actually been one of the more interesting maps I've ever seen. And I think it, I'm trying to, I'm going to pose this question to both the YouTube and the Twitch audience and say, is there a single matchup where Revolver doesn't uh, mess with the standard meta somehow? Overlord, by the way, sneaking up, it's going to see uh, the gateway, the, the cannon, it looks like a Nexus warping in as well. So despite going over pool, it looks like no Zerglings being built from Tefik, still getting that cannon <laughs> forced out. Third base going in that bottom. And this is an interesting play from Tefik, realizing the the difficulty of establishing additional bases. He's like, nope, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this one in the left. It looks like Dreamer is gonna scout that. One disadvantage for Tefik is just that I'm gonna go with Tefik rather than MSJ. It's just easier to say for some reason. One disadvantage of this is Zealots in the mid game can end up being difficult to defend because this is a sizable map and you can see where you just got to run a lot of, you got to run troops out there but if tefik can i don't know sneak to hive tech rather, rather rapidly he can establish essentially what it would be for gas it's kind of the i feel like that's a lot of zerg strategy these days in the meta is just get to hive as quickly as possible and i feel like it's that was definitely the case in zvt and i feel like it is starting to eke that direction in ZVP as well. Speaking of which, I feel like Dreamer has not, I'm not going to say 100% figured out this matchup, but I really like his response to the modern uh, state of Zerg versus Protoss. Oftentimes he will go Stargate, opt to build more Corsairs, and then utilize kind of the Zealot rush in the mid game in combination with the Corsairs, go ahead and wipe out Overlords effectively, keep his opponent in the dark, and then try to because essentially what i feel like zerg have pushed back to these days is oftentimes going the three or four base come at me bro style of zerg which is i'm gonna just shell up and force you to come to me i'm gonna get looks like we are seeing a layer off three bases thus far we'll see if this turns into four hatch uh play this probe has been alive absolutely forever great job from dreamer keeping it alive all indications from tefik thus far is that we are in fact going to end up seeing a a spire opener here does have a good amount of zerglings it looks like a bunch of zerglings grouping up 
to the left, just in case a zealot, potentially in case a zealot snuck that direction, or maybe to knock down any probe that was trying to wander out there and get a good look at the count. Looks like there is a spire incoming. A zealot marching his way across before the stargate, maybe to keep this probe alive. Never mind. Three zealots just marching straight down from Dreamer. A bit in a staggered delay. It looks like Tefik already had some Zerglings out to go ahead and deal with it. The probe going to just turn right around. And without a Sutton Colony here at that natural expansion, yeah, wants to go ahead and pressure that. So Tefik trying to group up, trying to keep those Zerglings in position. This is also going to give some scouting information to Dreamer. Not that he's going to need it. He does have that... He does have that Corsair moving in as well. That Spire could be spotted. And it looks like the Zelt's going to regroup on the high ground. To try to get, yeah, better engagements here overall. Some Zerglings spawned from both locations. This Zealot marching in out of nowhere. So Tefik is going to be, should be able to wipe these Zealots out. But did have to build a lot of Zerglings to get it done. Spire just about finished. Did the Corsair, was the Corsair cancelled? I'm wondering if Dreamer spotted it. He might be in a bit of trouble here. He's dropping another cannon to deal with the Zerglings on the front. But, never mind. Yeah, so Corsair was there. Second... There's the fourth hatch and the second extractor. It looks like he's going to get an overlord out of this. The Zergling's not going to be able to get a lot accomplished. Nice instincts on Dreamer to go ahead and plop that second cannon preventatively. Should easily be able to get level one weapons. And we also see another hatchery being grabbed. So this is going to be what looks like five hatch, kind of a transition to five hatch spire. One overlord down. Actually, we're scourge. Yeah, looks like a couple scourge were able to get built. They're going to be able to wipe out that first Corsair, which is critical. I'll see if Dreamer looks like he is pausing Corsair production. He's not going to opt to do what I liked seeing on the past. Looks like a single zealot sneaking out. It's getting ransacked by those Zerglings. But something I'd like seeing from Dreamer previously was just keep the Corsair count up. So that he can, usually at this stage, I think he's going to opt to not do it because he's already expended those zealots. But at this stage of the match, oftentimes what he'd be doing is, is knocking those... Uh, Establishing air control, taking out overlords to keep his opponent in the dark, and then just running the zealots absolutely everywhere to force additional production. He's currently up in the overall probe count. Was able to take out an overlord to slow Tefik down a little bit, but Tefik, in the meantime, has established, like I was saying uh, earlier towards the beginning of the match, he's got four bases, which looks like it could translate very easily into four gas. And all sorts of hatcheries and hydralis dens... Uh, being established as well. A nice some city here to the bottom left. So yeah, he's definitely playing the come at me bro style now. Where it's like, you go ahead, you gotta come to me and slow me down because I am just going to build, 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 build. And if you don't stop me, then I'm gonna run you over with my economy in a bit. Five Zelts marching down, the Zerglings being caught a bit off guard. This is a single Sutton Colony to try to defend us. This is a nice some city. Second Sutton Colony being built. This is gonna force several units and the Zelts actually just marching right into the main. The Scourge are gonna do nothing. To this and first of all a lot of drones could get wiped out let's see if the spire gets wiped out as well tefik trying to retreat with those drones now fortunately for him he's going to be able to get these mutalisks overhead but not before he ends up losing a bit of tech so that spire gonna get wiped out that's a critical piece and that armor wasn't able to trick in and he's going to work on that layer as well might actually be able to take out that spawning pool he's repositioning these zealots to engage some of the zerglings run a, running away this is the thing is the zealots they're getting hit from the sky. They don't care. They're like, whatever. I'm still just going to do as much damage as possible. Drones pulling off. Doing a bit of a drone drill. Losing yet another drone in the midst of that attack. And it looks like a lot of Mutalisks were able to sneak out before that Spire was complete. So the Zealots are getting taken out. However, that was a lot of drone and a lot of disruption from Dreamer. A couple Scourge out in the air. Looks like there were two Corsair out for Dreamer comparatively. He's got uh, three gateways, Temple Archives, Scythe Storm finished. He's not at risk of getting busted. Plenty of anti-air, honestly, uh, between Scythe Storm and these Corsair. But it is possible that these Mutalists can dive on top of those High Templar. And this is definitely going to keep Dreamer in that defensive position. And Tefik is now running at four bases. So this is four base Zerg versus two base Protoss. Currently, that's not reflected in the overall supply count. But if Tefik can turn, if he can turn up that knob and start getting production going, particularly with the two evolution chambers that I believe he's got that evolution chamber. No, just one evolution chamber thus far. We'll see. Dreamer pressing out a little bit, able to take out some Scourge, able to do a little bit of damage to the Mutalisk. Looks like he is dropping that second evolution chamber. 
Dreamer already on top of this, though. He's got that forge in his main. He's got that forge at the natural expansion. He's going to be able to hold an upgrade advantage at the very least as far as something going for him. The Mutalisks diving into that natural expansion, able to pick off a handful, a handful of probes, dodging that Psy Storm as well. Corsair's moving up there trying to do a bit of damage. But here's the thing with double evolution chambers, Tefik, if he can get some... If he could just get some good engagements, he can eventually turn around with his four bases and just start overwhelming just through keeping at least not so far behind in the overall upgrade war and just having a superior economy and just overwhelming troops. He's got to do that, though, in the next grouping of minutes. The height... Oh. Beautiful play from these Munalists able to jump on top of those High Templar. That's two High Templar picked off. That was well worth it. Because so much of the mid game is about having Psystorm available to kind of push these Hydralisk armies back. The Hydralisk is going to go ahead, not a huge grouping, going to back off. Their level one weapons going to be, or level one spines, going to be in position momentarily. It looks like Lurker also being upgraded. Bit of an empty Psystorm, only catching three Hydralisks right there. And Dreamer, considering he's low on High Templar, might want to preserve that. Dreamer building a lot of units. And my concern for Tefik right now is, is yeah, he, so he's exploring. He's denied. He He's got a bit... I, I feel like he's being a little bit too greedy here. He's got four bases. He's trying to position up to go ahead and stop Dreamer from taking his third. I think he should just go ahead and drone saturate uh, and build his army, keep his upgrades up. Instead, he's going ahead and getting in Dreamer's face. Dreamer is going to get a little bit of a whiff of a size storm there, but it looks like he's going to be able to wipe out this army fairly effectively, especially with level 1 armor coming online before it looks like level 1 weapons just coming online. So a lot of Hydralisks being wiped out, and honestly, they didn't weren't able to take out a lot otherwise. Dreamer with a significant supply lead, he's easily going to be able to establish that third base. So at this stage of things, especially without Lurkers out in the field, and Lurker aspect not even researched, I think Tefik should just count the wins, go ahead and drone up a little bit, establish this fourth gas, start making his way... Uh, towards Hive, basically or work that tech advantage and think about more denying the fourth rather than worrying so much about this third base. Maybe start thinking about a softer contain. Looks like he is starting to back off now. Getting some lurkers. Because I still feel like he's in the come at me bro stage of this where he's got the four bases. He's still one base up on Dreamer. He doesn't have to get aggressive. He can go ahead and force his opponent to come to him. Queen's Nest in the main. Looks like we are seeing a drop of some Zealots from Dreamer. And the Hydralisks and Lurkers completely out of position to deal with this. It looks like the two Hydralisks that might have been able to defend this walking out. And so that drone line, once again, under assault. Drones pulling out now. Hive being upgraded. So Dream is going to see the Hive upgrade. Actually might end up losing a spawning pool as well. Finally, the Hydralisks able to group up and take care of the rest of these zealots. And I think upon seeing that, Dreamer is making the right choice. So Zergling pocketed. It is going to be able to see this fourth base. It's not going to be able to do anything about it, though. Photon cannon warping in. So Dreamer is going to go ahead and grab his fourth. And this is... I feel very intelligent now. Like, talking about, like, okay, Dreamer got map position. That's going to allow him to go ahead and grab his fourth. Tefik, you can see he's just staging in the middle here to go ahead and defend these four bases. A lot of lurkers kind of grouped up. Dreamer fanning out the Observer lagging. Some okay size storms to the south. These Hydralisks are going to get wiped out to the left, but it looks like the bulk of this force is going to be engaged. The Dragoons, are they going to be... I don't see the Observer in position. There is no Observer along this left. Might have gotten wiped out, picked off. Now the Observer is moving up to deal with those Lurkers, but those Lurkers were just able to do immense amounts of damage. But despite that, Dreamer just has an overwhelming army. Nice pickoff from Tefik. Wiping out the observers overhead, though. So now... Never mind. There's the observers lagging. The observers just not in position to deal with these lurkers. But Dreamer just has too much bulk, too many units. So it looks like he's going to be able to clear out everything that's left. And establish degree of map control. If nothing else, that's going to force Tefik to build a lot of troops to try to reestablish a semblance of a defense. 12 o'clock base is up. That's four bases. So now it's four bases versus four. Some Overlords being picked off as well. Dreamer with the Supply Count lead. And Dreamer also with the Weapons Upgrade lead, which is controlling this match thus far. Adrenal Upgrades is coming online. 
for Tefik. He is starting to press uh, Evolution Chamber upgrades. The one thing with kind of sneaking back towards more Zergling based stuff, it looks like he's gonna he's already grabbed this five o'clock base. Another drop incoming. It looks like another four results. This has been so effective. Some Scourge are in position. Are they going to catch the shuttle this time, though? Spotting. Lazy Scourge. Unfortunate for Tefik right there. Also, a unit just want, looks like that Zergling finally uh, waking up. Those Corsairs doing work. Putting Tefik in the red. And this is the worst possible time to be in the red. Because you got Zealots marching in. Once again, going to be able to get on the drone. This is, the, what, the third drop of Zealots sneaking into the main. This has to be so frustrating. And that's going to work on that spawning pool once again. Some Hydralis finally marching in, but not before that spawning pool has been wiped out. So Tefik going to need to rebuild his spawning pool at the 16-minute mark. Not exactly optimal. Dreamer, 40 supply ahead, has great positioning. In the middle of the map. Marching into another Hydralisk Lurker army. But I think he can be content actually at this stage of things. Yeah, just drop those Psystorms. He's pushing up into this. The Observer's again lagging behind. Allowing those Lurkers to get a lot of damage. Now they're... but So Dreamer just trying to be very protective of the Observers. Make sure they're not picked off. He's done a good job this time engaging. And just wiping out everything Tefik has in the middle of of this map, again, with a sizable upgrade advantage. At this stage, honestly, I feel like what Dreamer can do is just kind of hold this position, reinforce it, and grab additional bases, and just make sure that Tefik doesn't expand from here and just play the long-term economic game. He's at 145 supply versus 90. Huge macro lead. He's exploring, looking to get some additional damage done. This is a nice SimCity to the upper left. I don't know if he has enough units to punch through this, but he does have incredible upgrades, keep in mind. It's 2-2 two, two, uh, Hydralisks as well. The Archon's able to get on top of them, able to just wipe out, very rapidly wipe out that Sutton Colony. More reinforcements coming in. The Zelts trying to cycle through. There are no Lurkers there, so the Observers don't need to be protected as well. Some Hydralisks trying to reinforce. The Zelts able to get on top of those Hydralisks towards that natural expansion. Is that High Templar going to be able to make its way and, and Psystorm those drones? It looks like it is making its way north. It doesn't have the energy to drop a Psystorm, unfortunately, so it's going to get picked off. And so those Dragoons and Observers look like they're going to get wiped out. The SimCity too strong. Dreamer has managed to reinforce. I almost feel like that was a donation of an army, to be honest. And again, I would have preferred him to see. But while that was happening, I yet another Zealot drop in the main. Forcing the Zerglings back. That's been. I feel like that's the highlight of this match. Is five drops. These Scourge need to be fired. Like, honestly... I think Tefek should just take these Scourge, find some Hydralisks, and kill them for not doing their job. Like, Russian execution style. Like, I'm talking Soviet era. Let's... Come on. What are you doing, guys? Uh, Defiler Mound being produced. You got three Evolution Chambers. I mean, like, Cold War... Not Cold War. Like, World War II style. Like, come on. Come on. Just wipe them out. Anyway. Uh, Zealots regrouping. <laughs> not sure where I was going with that. Zealots regrouping. Dragoons regrouping. High Templar right there. Dreamer with nearly 200 supply. Practically twice the supply of Tefik. Tefik just getting past the 100 mark. He's just tr going to try to hold, it looks like, everything to the south. And this is like the biggest threat in the game, it feels like, thus far, as these Zealots that have just been able to go above the lines and wipe out drones. It looks like that's going to happen once again as Dreamer once again pushing into the bottom left. The Observer is not there, so the Zealots... Eating a huge amount of spine damage. Very, very much softening them up. The Dragoons now grouped as well. I don't see the Observers overhead yet. Able to stop a hatchery from being produced. Finally, the Observer there. But not before these Zealots just getting wiped out in mass. Reinforcements coming from the right. Corsairs. Looks like a single Zealot was dropped somewhere back here. I assume uh, at this location, the Zealots being dropped off in the main of this bottom left-hand base. Otherwise, some Psystorms being dropped off. Otherwise, I think Dreamer looks like he's going to back off because this is a huge SimCity. But at the very least, able to deny that mineral only with this attack. Some Zerglings flooding in. They should be able, especially with that Adrenal upgrade, should be able to wipe out everything that's left. Dreamer going to go ahead and grab his 11 o'clock base. But after donating that army and actually this army not in position to defend it, that is potentially exposed. 
some Zerglings Hydralisks running up. Keep in mind, uh, special thanks. Actually, Dreamer giving me the raid. I got to give the shout out since he is in this match. This is the replay he gave me. Was potentially at risk of the uh, counterattack right there. Zealots grouping up once again. It looks like they're going to go ahead and just check out the main, get the scouting information as they can. Some Zealots should be able to wipe them out on that trail. Some additional Zerglings running up. Ooh, that High Templar a little bit exposed. Looks like they're just going to stick with that Zealot. Grudge match right there. And I like that he's kind of hiding these units to the bottom left to potentially wipe out a Nexus down the line. Cannons being established. Dreamer still with a huge supply lead. Upgrade lead in his favor as well. Level 3 weapons, level 3 armor, level 1 shield. <clears throat> Tefik starting to rely on those Zerglings more and more, and he does have a Defiler out in the field. And this is where Zerg starts to get scary, even at smaller unit counts. Because with Swarm and those Adrenal upgraded Zerglings, you really need Archons, you need Psystorm, you need a lot of stuff to try to defend. And I don't, or maybe oftentimes, uh, Reavers. We do see a robotics facility already at the 12 o'clock location, potentially to produce Reavers on site. There are a huge amount of Zealots, and keep in mind the Zealots are level 3 weapon upgraded. Versus the level 0 uh, upgraded Zerglings. Claws are uh, being upgraded on Tefik's side of the map. He's going to go ahead and try to grab this mineral only at the inside 9 o'clock location. Dreamer cycling around. But with this unit grouping, unless he's, he's going to drop a plague, nice plague on top of those zealots, that Defiler is going to be able to retreat some Zerglings engaging from the right as a distractionary attack. And Archons getting a little bit too greedy, pushing forward into that Lurker line without Observer support and without the support of the rest of their army. Same thing with the single Hydralisk. A Defiler waiting to drop yet another Plague. Another huge Plague. Doesn't really affect the Archons all that much, but it really softens up those Dragoons and those Zealots. Mineral only. It looks like it is again going to get wiped out. Dreamer pressing through this. Looks like he has been... His army losing a bit of cohesion because Tefik able to engage with some units from behind to kind of do some disruption. A bit of a pocket with some beautiful Psy Storms wiping out a lot of the Hydralisks there to that location. And Dreamer have it, having trouble this, uh, keeping his army grouped and deciding where to attack. It looks like he's now, the Observer getting wiped out, just as that Lurker's dying. Does he another, have another Observer to move up? Some additional servers to move up, but keep in mind they're at risk of that Spore Colony. Some Psy Storms over that Lurker behind. That Lurker still standing, though. And counterattack coming in from the left. Lurker is getting in on top of those Archons. And keep in mind, a lot of these units were also plagued earlier, so that they're very, very uh, weak. Some Zealots marching in with no Observer cover. And there's still that Lurker just peeling away at what's here, but the Zealots do not care. Still marching in. Going to be able to force their way in. There's also a huge attack happening at that Mineral only. The Zealots are able to wipe out a lot of units there. They might be able to wipe out that base before it even gets up and running. The Observer finally able to get there, and it looks like Dreamer, just through superior supply, able to breach Tefik's bases, wiping out this 6 o'clock location. Tefik in disarray. So 6 o'clock base, and nice. No, go back. Take out the hatchery. Get the hatchery. Zergling's moving in. Actually, Tefik might be able to defend this between that plague and the distraction of the Zealots. Yeah, the Zealots getting wiped out. The Archon getting wiped out. Just barely last second with a tap from that Archon taking that hatchery out. And that mineral-only expansion also wiped out. So Tefik now, all of a sudden, <laughs> yet another shuttle. This is, I think, the sixth shuttle. Maybe the seventh. Dropping some more Zealots in the main yet again. To go ahead and engage and disrupt these drone lines. They actually might be able to take out the Defiler Mound as well. It looks like, yeah, they're going to go ahead and concentrate on that Defiler Mound. Before units are able to defend this. It looks like that, while this is happening, that upper left... Has been cleared out. A Reaver walking up and just, yeah, eight kills. Looks like it did all of the work there. Zerglings marching in to go ahead and deal with these Zealots. But Hero Zealots, late game, taking out the Defiler Mound. And that Defiler Mound was going to be a critical a component for Tefik in the late stages of this match. Defiler getting wiped out. So he's going to have to go ahead and get that Defiler Mound back down. And still, these Zealots alive, working on drones. In the main, some Hydralisks and Zerglings. Zerglings, do your job. Come on. They're just as bad as these Scourge. 
that are doing. Honestly, I feel like part of Defic's problem is it's just his army, unresponsive, refusing to participate in these matches. But bottom right's been wiped out. So the natural expansion is empty. This bottom left hand base is still producing. This base is not yet up. Well, I guess not yet reestablished, I should say. Natural expansion looking thin here as well. The main, just because it's been assaulted so many times, still has minerals. But what we're looking at is essentially, I'm going to call this half a base. Base yet, not yet saturated. So this is what, one, two, potentially three, potentially four, if Tefik can hold it. Uh, bases versus three base Protoss still. However, Tefik behind overall in supply. He's still got to get drones at this location. And Dreamer is continuing to press forward with this assault. Another plague being dropped. It looks like the Zealots marching in. Just evacuating this base is just going to seed it to Dreamer's Assault. The Zealots marching into that natural expansion. They've got some Hydralis pinned against the wall. They're actually going to march all the way into the main, but this is a nice Sim City at the natural. I'm not sure that Dreamer's going to be able to breach it without the full brunt of his army. Dreamer continuing to press forward. More Zealots, more Archons starting to march, march forward. Still a beautiful Sim City, so this is going to be difficult. He's got to work through the Evolution Chamber and this hatchery to get to the something colonies, it looks like. The Zealots are starting to fan out on top of that. Tefik producing some troops, trying to reinforce with his Lurkers back this direction. There is a wall of Zealots, it looks like High Templar and Archons, to go ahead and greet them. He's got them pinned into that corner. They're going to drop right there. And with a flurry of spines, going to wipe out the Archon, a Reaver... Walking here out of nowhere. That was a slow walk reaver from the natural expansion. Grouping up. And I think if Dreamer can just keep these units grouped, he might be able to win this match. Just, oh man, these, look at these reaver shots. Huge. And side storm. Oh, every bit of explosive damage wiping out all of the lurkers. Tefik's base, his main is breached. This is a lot of tech to lose. He needs to start, and this is going to likely be the killing blow. On Tefik, the Archons do not care about that swarm. They still do plenty of splash damage underneath that. I think actually all of their damage is splash. Zerglings, Lurkers trying desperately to get up into that high ground to deal with this. The Archon line, honestly, they can turn around and maybe wipe this out. Some side storms being dropped from behind. Is Dreamer going to have enough of an army to defend the rest of this? Morphing another Archon in the midst of this, he's he's... Does not have any side storm left, so it looks like Tefik is going to be able to go ahead and defend his main and pick off what's left. But man, there is a trail of destruction left in Dreamer's Wake. Mineral only wiped out, natural expansion wiped out. This base is still exposed, so Tefik still needs to think about maybe he just starts morphing a layer now. A lot of lurkers starting to be morphed at this mineral only, but he's basically running at two bases versus Dreamer's three. Dreamer already has another large army established with some zealots. He got that speed shuttle upgrade behind this. He's also got reavers grouped up there. He's w moving up. It looks like he's going to do a oh, nice... This is going to be... Is this going to be probe on drone violence? I'm waiting for it. We'll see momentarily. Try to keep an eye on that because that's always fun seeing the peons fight in the trenches. There it is. Yeah! I think the probe got the first hit. So it's going to be close, but that's level three carapace. Level 2 shield, though. It looks like this drone is going to end up winning this fight overall. Potentially. Oh, some Zerglings reinforced. Let, the, let them fight. Let them fight. No. Okay, that gets died. But while Dream <laughs> that was happening, a bit of a regrouping. It looks like a Dark Templar was able to slip into this mineral only and get a lot of work done. How did that even get in there? There's like overlords. You got a, a, a spore colony and an overlord overhead. How? Dark Templar also grouping up, starting to work on those Defilers at that Inside 9 location. So Dreamer sitting at three bases. He's going to go ahead and push in, it looks like, to the 6 o'clock once again. There's no anti-air, so those... And actually, no. So pushing there, redirecting, though, towards the mineral only. Swarm is dropped, but Archons, Zealots, and Reavers do not care about Dark Swarm. So they're just obliterating absolutely everything. It looks like a plague being dropped. The drone's just being pulled out of this location. Tefik does not have an army in position to engage. Some Zerglings briefly grouping up to go ahead and to try to deal with this. But that expansion very rapidly wiped out. So there's now one mining base left at the 5 o'clock location. Dreamer still sitting on three bases. 
Lurker's trying to group up from behind. They're eating a lot of Psystorm. And Dreamer going to end up potentially losing this army with all of the Lurkers that are now coming in and grouping. But he has done the damage. Wiping out that mineral only once again. Still sitting with a supply count lead. Tefik trying to take that 9 o'clock base. The Observer's still overhead, kind of getting a good look. Tefik, with this turnaround, needs to wipe out something. Actually, take it back. Dreamer, so his natural expansion, so he's got basically upper left-hand base is working for him. He's got those two bases. So two base versus two base. Bottom right, I'm not going to count because it's not very saturated. I'm calling it bottom right instead of the main. Reaver's dropping here. Able to pick off a couple Hydralis, scooping up some nice micro from Dreamer. Putting on a clinic now. Some Lurkers trying to push up to defend this. They're eating a bit of damage. No Observer to observe, so that should be the end of... Well, maybe the end of this harass. He's going to do another drop. Drones getting annihilated there. Another drop. One Reaver getting taken out from the splash of the Spines, but ugh, lucky for Tefik. A dud on that follow round. Second Reaver dropping right on top of a Lurker and getting wiped out. So both players regrouping. Dreamer hitting 200 supply once again. Doing a fantastic job macroing now in the late game. All he has to do is wipe out this 9 o'clock base. And I don't even think he needs to worry about this 6 o'clock. Tefik needs to find something. Some way to get back in this match. Maybe if he can secure that 3 o'clock base and get some... I don't know what he could do, honestly, at this stage. Because there's, there's enough Reavers. There's enough Archons. There's enough basically anti-defiler, anti-everything. To defend a lot of these bases. Dreamer has a sizable bank. Looks like he's going to go ahead and chop down on some of these Zerglings to get, I assume, Plague Energy. Dreamer now streaming to the bottom right. He's going to go ahead and peek at that 3 o'clock location, which is not yet established. And maybe make his way towards this mineral only. And potentially the main. Going kind of end around Tefix units right here. Psystorm. On that Defiler, the Defiler still get the pl gets a Plague, but only on the High Templar and the Dragoon. I'm actually wondering, when when High Templar morph together, do they get... I think when High Templar morph, they also get... Uh, it's not like they lose any energy. So diving into that Mineral only. This is, this is late game Protoss at its best. Dragoons, Zealots, Reavers, everything. Full upgrades across the board. Very terrifying. Dreamer going to go ahead and tap and take that Nexus to the 9 o'clock location. He can walk in, wipe out the main. Greater Spire morphing in, so that might be a solution for Tefik. He still has half the supply, and I don't know that that Greater Spire is going to be able to do anything before it gets wiped out. Those Scourge still sitting there. They weren't able to stop a single shuttle. Shame on you. Zealots marching into this bottom right-hand corner. Evolution, yeah, this is a lot of tech to drop. The Evolution Chambers, I do not believe, play a big factor because this is a fully upgraded Zerg army. But losing that Hive, losing the Queen's Nest, losing the Greater Spire. Significant, particularly because if additional tech gets, basically you have to go layer st uh, straight up. It looks like there is a Defiler Mound being rebuilt uh, somewhere on the map. But Greater Spire down. Tefik going to go ahead and try to grab his Mineral only once again. This base is starting to look thin. He has nothing, and he's so he's got the nine o'clock base up and running. This is starting to look thin. It's three bases for Dreamer otherwise, and Dreamer has a sizable army. Although he's getting boxed in by these lurkers, huge size storm on those hydralisks and everything else. Though he needs to get an observer down here to go ahead and rescue this army. He's got another army. Wow, that's a lot of archons positioning at that three o'clock base. So it's possible he's just going to try to sandwich what Tefik has. Those lurkers really doing damage. You could hear on the audio they just had. Endless, endless, uh, looks like he did manage to get that Spire down. Double Defiler Mound, interesting, in the bottom left from Tefik, just preventatively. But Tefik, desperately, so finally an Observer grouping up to rescue these guys. Tefik, way behind in the supply count, is hurting economically, comparatively. You can just see as far as, like, the banks go. Dreamer, it's just kind of a cleanup match, and wow, those Psy Storms over those Hydralisks. Starting to march in. More Psystorm. He's just unrelenting. And Tefik just, yeah, losing a lot of this army. It looks like these Hypolis still able to peel through what's left.
But despite all of this, there's still a near 200 supply army from Dreamer. It looks like while that was happening, a drop completely wiping out all of the drones at that 9 o'clock location. Huge storms. Going to re-grab, and it looks like these drones just going to go ahead. And This is unfortunate because Dreamer has more High Templar to drop storms on, but there's like nothing to nothing to assault. Nothing to Psy Storm. Maybe if he can get to the 5 o'clock, looks like he's going to drop on the high ground. Is he going to get another side? Wow, another High Storm. Not only catching Hydalisks, but also catching the drones there. Which almost feels like insult to injury right here at this stage. It's like, a, a Dreamer's definitely one. Finally the Scourge. Were those the Scourge from here? I hope they were. I hope for these Scourges part that they were found and they were finally able to make it all the way around the map and finally take it. So what was that? The ninth shuttle? Finally able to take out the ninth shuttle that was dropping. So you know what they say. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me nine times. Shame on me. Archons regrouping. Hydralis is trying to engage from the north. But these Archons just walking walls of fire. In their truest form. Just plummeting forward. I, not just a wall of flame. It's like a, a wall of blue flame. That's sentient. How terrifying is that? Mineral only once again at risk. Swarms being dropped, but this is enough Zelts and Archons that it's not going to make a difference. The drone's just evacuating. And everything getting obliterated under this orange cloud. Dreamer sidestorming his own Zealots as well. Does not care at this stage of the match. He's got enough of a bank. It doesn't make a difference. Some Lurker is moving in. They're very short on life. I'm not, we'll see how long it takes these uh, Archons to actually get wiped out. Might be a while. Dreamer once again pressing into this SimCity, which feels like I think this is the third or fourth time this has happened. I think this time it's going to stick, though. Diving in more Psystorm over that wall. A single Sutton Colony that's been here for just the entire match. Pressing in, getting wiped out. Tefik. Actually, no, there's still Scourge right there. So one of the Scourge. One of the Scourge was active. The second Scourge... Not active. Lurker is peeling in from behind. Still 200 supply for Dreamer. And it's just kind of a cleanup operation for him at this stage. Yeah, everything wiped out. This bottom left-hand corner get going to get wiped out. Some Zerglings trying to peel in, but those Zerglings do nothing to these Archons. It's like they, it's like they come up and high-five the Archons and they're dead. There's GG. Again, I want to say everybody check out Dreamer uh, as he casts BSL. And of course, the... Uh, BSL Pro League now underway. Uh, in half an hour, if you want to check out more BSL action, there is going to be the Gosu League, which is very high level of play. I think it's Group A and Group B uh, that are going to... I think it's going to be on Veer's channel. Uh, we'll see. Hope you guys enjoyed it, though. Thank you for listening.